Now it's time for us to look at something that's been generating some excitement <laughs> over at gt247.com. And today, <laughs> I don't know if it's excitement or uh, suicidal uh, tendencies, whooping and high-fiving by the shorts, but African Bank trading update is a stock that's slipped a long way in recent uh, months. You've been saying that you don't like the look of it at all. We are long it in the hot stocks portfolio, which is bad news. But just talk us through what's going on here, Mark. I mean, Abel already looking a bit weak and holding sort of levels of 27, 28 rand a share, crawling back to 29. Boom today, you know, down a big, big number, 16% on the day to around 24, bobbing along. I mean, uh, what, does one do in a, what does one do in a case like this? <laughs> well, look, I mean, the, the share price had been kind of uh, ambling along. I, we've been very nervous about it for a long time. We've articulated that a number mm -hmm. of times, but the sleeping <laughs> dogs lie. Eh? Um, we know that um, one of the asset managers took a fairly large chunk of them, uh, about 5.1, 5.2% in the last month or so. But that's also going to be a, that's going to be a big problem for them, I suppose. Um, the guidance uh, on the headlines on earnings were pretty negative. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've been kind of cautioned that there was, not cautioned, but subtly cautioned. Because remember they issues. have a September year end, so this is now guidance with regards to their first six months uh, up to an ending uh, March. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's, um, you know, and, and the guidance has been negative. We, mm. we've, we've had a negative uh, view on them uh, for fairly a, a long time, purely because of the, uh, the nature of what we feel is, is, the, is the way the kind of uh, unsecured credit universe is, mm. is functioning at the moment. Mm. And we've always had a, a, a very strong um, suspicion that things can quickly escalate. Uh, if your default rates on, uh, or, or your contingency rate on, on people taking out short-term uh, debt increases, and you've not got m more new participants coming in, the equation doesn't, doesn't work. No matter how mm. you try and control it, mm. actuarially, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So what you're implying is that, first of all, there's been a lot of new credit supplied to this market because the big banks have also been doing lots of unsecured lending. So uh, the pure players, which are obviously uh, able in the first instance and maybe Capitec secondarily and maybe even transaction capital is a third, they're all getting a little bit anxious about the extent to which they can write new quality business. They're all upping the amounts that they allocate, uh, you know, in terms of write downs of existing non-paying loans, which is always a factor in their business. But, you know, sometimes if they're anxious, they put more to it. And the ability to write sort of quality business going forward is looking a bit tenuous. So all things being equal, this thing gets marked. There's the day price. So it's down now to around, you know, 24 rands a share. 16, 17%. But uh, what you will notice is <coughs> that they made like 3 rand 40 last year. So even if they make, you know, 25% less this year, you know, we're looking at earnings at around, you know, 2 rand 50 to 2 rand 60, 2 rand 70 next year. So at this level, they're back at the sort of normal 10 PE, they're a dividend payer, still profitable. Huh? Maybe, maybe not. The, the problem, the problem comes that these kind of factors begin to begin to spiral. Once that default rate uh, starts to starts to escalate, um, the the the, uh, the operations like African Bank, they go to the markets and they fund at a certain yes. kind of rate as well. They end up taking uh, hits in various areas in terms of the mechanism. So. The, the real risk is if certain aspects get a little bit out of control, mm. and I'm not for a moment saying it's an out of control issue, I'm mm. saying it's, I think it's being very well managed and it's being very constructively, and uh, management's being very forthright in, in, in their approach. They've incorporated additional um, facilitation into these numbers, so the numbers are a little bit dressed on the yes. negative side, yeah, yeah. but the prognosis still remains negative. Mm. And, and that was very clear in today's comment. They yeah. said, look, it's not looking so great for going forward. Yeah, so the, so the view is at the moment, uh, if you are long, be careful. Mm. <laughs> uh, we are long, and we're in a fairly modest size long, as we'll see in a little while. Um, now, I'm going to have to fess up here to something very, very naughty, and that is that when they fell this morning, our prior stop loss level on this position was 24 Rand. And I could see that it was getting dangerously close to that level. So what did I do? I went into the system on gd247.com, and I lowered the stop loss level from 24 to 20, which I know is like that's a no -no. trading 101. <laughs> What a terrible thing to do. Yeah, I mean, look, it just, go, <laughs> it just goes to show, it, it uh, illustrates the fallibility that we all have as, as mm. traders and position takers. You know, we know the stock intrinsically, we know it in and out, it goes a little bit off expectation. We, we, we say, okay, well, we can weather a little bit more. Mm. Generally, as a rule, one should never, ever do that. It's mm. escalating your commitment to something which is, which is losing. So it's not quite as bad as sort of doubling down and buying more at the low just because you don't want to be wrong and because you sort of want to... Um, put more money in harm's way. 
but in a way it's sort of throwing out the thing that's designed to be there to discipline you in cases when you're off wrong yeah i mean, I mean wrong, it, wrong, it, it works as it works for a number of reasons first of all because the positions are usually a little bit more leveraged than you would do you would do naturally mm. uh, that's that's the first kind of thing that the light that should kind of spin in the back of our heads and secondly it's not there for, an, for it's it's there at a level at which one one is one is wrong mm. um you know one can square off at that level take the hits reevaluate the share maybe two rand further down in which case you've saved money the, the share may be two rand further up in which case the momentum may take yeah. it further yeah. but it creates a breathing space as well to to be cold and calculated okay but here's another scenario and this close on this slightly different note is say you're not in the position at all right you see a big index constituent of this nature down 16% on the day. You know that it's a stock that's been heavily shorted. You know also that in cases like this, the short sellers like to really push it down in order to try and force some kind of capitulation. Then against the backdrop of what's been quite a generally strong market, you might say, well, the shorts are gonna get tired and they're gonna book their gains and there could be a little bit of a rebound. Is that a trade you've seen people play successfully, coming in at these lows? I have seen that happen, but one of the facts with this share is that this share is a very, very heavily pushed share into the year. Every single uh, uh, kind of, a lot of prominent analysts, et cetera, were saying everybody should have one. So mm. the other side of the argument would be that it's going to be a lot of longs that are taking a bit of punishments as well. Mm. But there definitely have been some, some decent shorts in there. And we know that there's always going to be an overreaction, um, maybe a little bit, little bit of overreaction, a little bit of stability, a little bit of kind of uh, froth and then, then mm. the true trend will emerge. Mm. So what you're saying is it doesn't look to you like something that's going to rebound uh, in any kind of decisive fashion, but it's possible. You know, at times like these, sometimes there is a little bit of an oversell. Yeah, if I don't, didn't have a mm. position at the moment and I, and I wasn't short and I was one trying to work out what was going on at the moment, one simply wouldn't short it at these levels. You just mm. wait. If we get a bit of an improvement here, sentiment picks up, there's that short covering possibility mm. that we're mm. talking mm. about. And then if the fundamentals <laughs> remain a bit uh, dicey, I don't really see much reason for them to improve. Mm. They may not be as bad as we think, but I don't see any reason to improve. Mm. Then we hit them down when they're, when they're, when they're running up again. 